you're alive. Noise. Noise. Yeah, so you'll, you'll do the intro song and then we'll just be like, hey. Hey, hey. <laughs> Guys, what is up? This is Dustin and Spencer with the Absolute ATM sh show. Welcome, uh, welcome. We actually haven't decided what we're going to call it yet, but that's just the first thing that came to mind. So here we go. <laughs> and that's what it's going to be called. Yep, yep. Here in <laughs> here in Dustin's house. Um, yeah, let's just go. Let's just dive we're, right in. We're doing it, man. Yeah, we're dive doing right it. We wanted to start a podcast for a while. Um, reason that we wanted to do so is because we only found one out there by ATM Marketplace that is doing podcasts, and it's mostly about industry related industry related topics and things like that we wanted to I guess provide a little bit more value on uh, the ATM side of things for people that are ATM operators um, versus just kind of broad topics and how to win in life and business and um, every area so that's what this show is all about so these pod podcasts are going to be about right for sure so, yeah if you are if you have an ATM business, if you're looking for some money that's passive and you don't have something on your radar, this could be interesting. And the ATM business is pretty simple. So, you know, for anybody who's like that, who's looking to take more control over life, we're, we're, we're here to help you kind of people. Yeah. And this is, this is taking place in, uh, 2021, January 9th, 2021. So we just came out of, um, Crazy elections, crazy year, coronavirus, um, the political coups that are going on, um, kind of just madness happening. And so um, we thought there's never been a better time to start a podcast and uh, pandemics make millionaires, I think, in my opinion. So Yeah, and, and Spence, like you're saying, um, with people now, with the uncertainty that is on the horizon, with our government, with the economy, you know, the economy was really strong last four years. years. Getting in there in your government. Right. We, we don't know how that's going to play out. We don't know how this COVID thing is going to affect people, whatever. And that's the thing is, if you're working for someone, then your future is in their hands. But if you have your own business, then that's how you take control of your life. Yeah. And like in our case, we started our ATM biz a couple of years ago, and we quickly became the leading provider of ATMs in Utah for events. And then we started getting the locations. Yeah. But in this year in COVID, we have made more this year than we did the previous year we were in business before COVID. So without any events going on this year. Yeah, we, we lost events and you'll learn with events. Events are like flipping houses. You get a lot of cash up front. It's some work. Whereas locations are like passive income, but our, our income went up and that's the thing, when you have your own business, you're not someone else's, you're not at, at the whim of somebody else's um, decisions. Yeah, long term and short term. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit about us. We're from, I'm from Utah, which is where we currently live. Where are you from again? Illinois. <laughs> Illinois, that's just from <laughs> Illinois. Dustin's actually my brother-in-law for all of you that don't know that. Uh, we started our business just, I guess, just barely under two years ago, and we're going strong. Um, so here we are. I love it. Here we are. And as you can see, we have this one microphone and we are violating social distancing rules because, uh, we just started this podcast. I ordered a second mic. So the next video will be a little more, uh, uh, a little less awkward. But yeah. you know what? We're, we're, we're brothers. Yeah, I so. can kiss you if you want. We're, we're yeah. within striking Come distance here. here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> striking distance. Yeah. Try not to spit on you. Um, but yeah, so. Today's, I guess, short first episode is what we wanted to share is how to get started with your own ATM business, just in a brief sense. Um, this is probably a topic that we'll come back to a whole lot, uh, just because that's pretty much like the number one question that I get asked on Instagram or by other people, and so just thought that we'd glean some insight for you yeah. on that. So. Yeah, and that, you know, whenever we mention a new business, anybody mentions a new business, it could be a car dealership, it could be multi-level marketing, it could be a sales business, it could be anything. The number one question I think that comes to a lot of our minds is, how do you start that? That's, that's usually the first thing you go to is, how do I start that? We focus on the how. And so, w what are some of the steps? Step number one, you know, we can give that to you. They're actually very simple steps. 
we've got five steps that will start you, you can take to start this business and you'll find after you start doing these things the business just starts to take a life of its own and it's not a very complicated thing you don't need a super high IQ to do this uh, you just need persistence but the very first thing you have to do is you have to start your business and that means legally yes Forming an LLC is what we did and what we recommend and what many people do. LLCs have advantages over other types of business entities. I'll just say this, is if you go to your state's website and you go to form a business entity, just pick LLC. It, the way it works is when you get taxed, you're not taxed on that income separately from your own personal income your tax all at once. You just include the money you make from the business in your tax return, and then you get taxed once for it. And then there's some legal protections. I, I don't really, you know, that's for a lawyer to tell you about. And, and if you wanna know more about an LLC versus like an S Corp, that's an S corporation. That's another type of business entity you can be. It has similar benefits to an LLC, but at the end of the day, just talk to your your accountant or a lawyer and get their advice, or I wouldn't say their advice necessarily, you can do that. But if you want to address some of your questions about those two business entities, yeah. feel free. But just to keep it simple, LLCs are extremely common and that is the simplest thing you can do is just go on your state's website, mm -hmm. form an LLC, that's step number one. And yeah, I think, well, I think in Utah, it was, what did we pay originally? It was like a $60 registration fee to do so and yeah. put your name in there and do all that. It varies per state. Um, some states, <coughs> California, uh, is uh, a lot more expensive. <laughs> so uh, for all of you Californians out there, just keep that in mind. Um, Illinois is different. New York's different. Yep. Different regulations. So be sure to look that up before you do that. Um, yes. They're, they're, you know you have to pay for your LLC <laughs> to yep. get it going. A small fee. Now once you do that, then the other thing you want to do is whatever city your business is going, your business headquarters will be located in, you have to identify your business address. And that's actually something you need to um, establish for the LLC. So what we did is we got what's called a virtual office through a company called Regis. And they're all over the country. But you can search for virtual offices and usually they'll let you use their address and it's uh, the same address for everybody. It's like a building and a suite. And usually these places have someone working there, you know, 40 hours a week, normal business hours, who will receive mail for you and who will, honestly, if anybody visits the building, they're going to think it's your business. It's, it's presented as your business. Mm -hmm. And then when they go to the receptionist, they're going to say, hey, I want to talk to bill of uh, you know, lightning ATMs and if you're not there then the receptionist will say oh they're not in right now I can take a message and they'll pass the message to you and then the virtual offices also give you the opportunity to use conference rooms to use their Wi-Fi uh, have an office you can actually rent offices in addition to just the virtual office because the virtual office is just so you can have a place to send your mail yeah exactly and it's honestly just uh if you're starting off and you have low capital initially, it's just such a good placeholder until you have your own space and you know you get up and rolling. Um, I go there every day. Shout out to Regis. Yep. <laughs> I yep. go there every day and do work, and they have a kitchen there. It's super nice. Um, that's who we use, but I'm sure you can find another virtual office in your area that would work. Just it just helps keep your expenses low. Yep. To start so. Yep, there's a little side note, a little tangent note, I guess, side note. But so number two, uh, when, after you've done your uh, registration for your LLC, the next step is going to be number two is finding a business bank account. Now, the first question that banks are going to ask you is, okay, is it a money service business? And the answer for ATMs, which has been conflicted in the past, is actually it's not a money service business. And they have their whole criteria for what that is and, and why they don't open up banks, uh, bank accounts for people with money service businesses, or it's harder to open that up. Um, we recommend you don't go to Chase or Wells or Zions Bank or Bank of America just because they, those bigger corporations, uh, for one, see you as, you know, you know they want to make money from their ATM fees for their own machines. And yep. 
Two, I, I think the biggest reason is in the past, ATMs have been linked to money laundering, which interferes with, uh, of course, a whole lot of things, but especially the financial institution itself. Uh, not a big fan. So be upfront when you go get your business bank account. We had to go to 12 different bank accounts. Um, and honestly, I would recommend targeting credit unions in your area just because they're more willing to work with you. They may or may not opened up an account for ATMs before and just be really transparent what you're trying to do, how the process works, how the processing fees and the vault cash and the surcharges all, where it goes which way, every way and the other way. Like you need to know it in and out so you can explain it to your bank manager essentially. Totally. And one thing I didn't mention either is after you form the LLC and you get your, your location and you're getting your bank account, you can do this, doesn't have to be in this order, but the, the next thing, this is not necessarily step three, but it's something that's part of step one sort of that you can do while you're looking for a bank account is getting a business license in whatever city you're doing business in. Mm -hmm. And it's really where your headquarters are. You don't need to get a business license for every single ATM all over your state or all over the, the country. Like, because then if you have a thousand ATMs, I mean, you're having a thousand licenses or potentially if you, for every city you're in. So really it's just your headquarters, wherever that's located, you get your business license there, then you can operate your business. And then your ATMs are really just a, it's like a vending machine. You don't need a license for a vending machine to do its job. Mm -hmm. So, you know, make sure you do that. Yep. Yep. Um, what else with that? I guess that's, that's pretty much it. Um, just, I think stay persistent. Yeah. With the bank account, um, you'll hear a no so many times. Um, and if you're scared of hearing no, then you shouldn't be in this business. <laughs> because when it comes to locations, you're going to hear no more than probably your wife tells you no, right? <laughs> just kidding. But uh, just get, get used to hearing that and stay persistent because banks will work with you uh, if you just stay at it. You'll find somebody. Totally. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Step three. Yeah, step number three and um, really step three, four, and five are a little bit interchangeable. Um, so step number three is you're going to want to find a, a processor. Um, most people have heard of that if you're dabbling into getting started with the ATM business. Um, a processor is basically just somebody who facilitates the bank-to-bank uh, -bank communication, um, you know, in-network um, machines and different you know, I don't know how, how Yeah, basically, it. yeah, the processor is, so when people put their card in the ATM, something, someone, some company, some software needs to be able to communicate with that person's bank. Yep. And what happens, it, just that little handshake that goes on between like the Wells Fargo bank account and your ATM, somebody has to administer that and process it. That's what they call it, processing. And you, you need to get with a company who, who will support that for you so you can actually run your ATMs. Because it's one thing, you just put a machine there, you don't have a processor, you, you, you can't run your business. Yeah, you turn it on and it, it won't do what you want it to do. Um, so our sponsoring bank, which is MetaBank, uh, yeah. that's the, the sponsoring bank for our um, business, I guess. Um, they're gonna help facilitate the communications between essentially the customer who's trying to get cash out of your machine um, it, it, we'll go into this in another episode, I promise, in more depth, but just to keep a simple processor, somebody who's going to route your transactions and facilitate that communication yep. bank to bank. Um, processors also, uh, typically, you can get step number four from them, which is an actual ATM machine. They have um, what's called ISOs, independent sales organizations, and sub-ISOs. Um, a lot of ISOs and sub-ISOs, if they're big enough, are able to uh, work with uh, the processor to help essentially other people process through them. Um, and we'll go into that in another time as well, based on the transaction threshold and sort of some of the interchange fees that go on and a whole bunch of other stuff. But number four, you want to buy a machine. So totally. that's the second com most common question, where do I buy a machine? Well. 
hopefully you've done the first three steps, right? Before you even buy the machine, so. Yeah, and actually, before we talk about machines, let's talk a little more about processing. So how, how do you find a processor? You can Google it, but usually the processors you'll find on Google will, who, who advertise that they're processors, they will require you to sign a contract to, to process with them. And processing you, isn't necessarily something you have to sign a contract for. But if you sign a contract with somebody who, who will process for you, then like Spencer said, they'll sell you a machine as well. And usually a lot of these processors want you to process with them if they're going to sell you machines. Mm -hmm. Now, ATMMachines.com and Absolute ATMs, our company, we process. So we can be processors. And uh, you know those entities don't charge a uh, contract. It's just a free thing you do. Okay. Yeah, and some, some companies will oftentimes uh, take some of the surcharge, the $3 convenience fee or surcharge fee, and claim that as a processing fee, 25 cents. We do all of our processing for free, which is how it should be. Um, that, that's, just the high, that's just the route to take, I think, is get a processor who's going to do that for free. Um, they're still going to make money on the, pro, on the transactions, even if they don't get anything from the surcharge. So beware of people who want to lock you to a contract and take some sort of processing fee uh, and you end up paying a thousand bucks in the year, right, for processing right. fees uh, when it could be free, so. Yeah, and, and he said a couple of things there to make sure everyone understands. You have a surcharge, this is a little bit digressing, but surcharges are, you know, when you go to an ATM and you put your card in and it says, we're gonna charge you $2.50 or $3, that's a surcharge. Mm -hmm. That's something we, the ATM owners, we set that. And depending on who your processor is, they can sometimes take a portion of that from you. They might require that. Or if they don't require that, then there's actually money that, this is something not many people know outside of the ATM world, is if you're a processor and you don't take any of the surcharge, the $3, forget the $3, banks actually pay you just to manage these, these communications. Like, if I go withdraw something from Wells Fargo, then they, like, on the back end, they send 25 cents for that transaction over to the processor. Yeah. Just like, thanks for doing that. And processors often will, that's how they make their money with you. They provide that service and they get what's called the interchange. That interchange is when the, the banks are on the back end, kind of like almost hidden, but it's not hidden. They're paying the guy who's managing these transactions between the banks and the ATMs. So the, the interchange is what a lot of processors, they're just happy with that. And sometimes they'll share that with you. So uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's processing. Yeah, think about it like it's a, a freeway. Like yeah. You have the interchange on the freeway, it's a similar thing just with the banks. Um, so I think nice. you said that very well. Um, nice. Yeah, so if you're looking for a processor, they'll oftentimes either offer a machine with uh, the processing or they'll just offer the free processing. You can buy a machine from anywhere. You could buy it from Hyosung directly from their website if you wanted, but uh, that won't necessarily mean you have a processor to go right. with it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, so keep that in mind. And we do both. So if you need a plug, let's plug ourselves. You can process and buy machines from us. <laughs> yes. So uh, if you are curious of what we offer, then let us know. Hit us up in the DM. Hit us up via email on this channel. If you haven't hit subscribe already, Definitely hit subscribe, <laughs> hit the like button, all that. Nice. Um, how's that for subtle? That's that good. Subtle? That's yeah. good. Um, yeah. So step that's four. step number. Yeah, that's, that's step seven. number th uh, three and four, I yep. guess, processing yep. and machine. And the fifth one is going to be location. So this is going to make or break your business, in my opinion. What I do you mean, mean, if you don't have a location, you're not going to you're not going to put your ATM anywhere, and no one's going to use it. Yeah, and and then why I said that all of those are interchangeable is because oftentimes people will have a location picked out or ready to go before they have a processor or a machine. Uh, you know, maybe their barber shop, you know, he asks, mm -hmm. hey, Mr. Barber, do you want a machine? And, you know, he sells them on and says, yeah. So sometimes you'll have a location ready to go before you have the other steps. Um, but without a location, you're not going to make money. And depending upon the location, um, I mean, we've learned the hard way that location's everything for making money, for 
the business. So, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, what do we, remember we did it, we did one barber shop that took card and it just had one transaction in like a month. And yep. we thought, well, <laughs> more. but uh, the reason that we love the ATM business so much is because it's like mini real estate where if your uh, location isn't making money, well, because you're the uh, ATM business owner and you own the machine, well, basically, if you have the exclusive rights to place an ATM there, then you can take it out if it's not producing and move it elsewhere. I mean, we've, we've moved machines three, four times sometimes, same machine to different spots and uh, until finally it's stuck and you know, you're making a decent amount of money to justify not taking it back out. Totally. Um, and we'll get into that in another episode too. A lot of people ask what's the, what's the minimum transaction count um, you know, that you look for. We at least look for 100 to see if there's even any potential there. Um, and Utah's, we don't have independent liquor stores, we don't have dispensaries, we, don't, we personally don't do dispensaries or strip clubs, um, which a lot of ATM guys do make a killing on, charge nine bucks for a surcharge, uh, or, or what have you. But without a good location, it's gonna make or break you, I think. Especially, oh, yeah. um, just be picky right to start, like right off the bat, right to start. Because if you have limited capital and you're trying to make money back, which ATMs, you could make a return on investment for the cost of the machine and all your overhead. You could break even in a matter of months. Uh, and if it's a good location, then you're just gonna speed that process up, essentially. So, sure. what do you have to add to that? Yeah, I was actually gonna ask you something. Ask me, go ahead. So, um, how do you, so you, talk, you said we you had to go to 12 banks mm -hmm. before you found the right bank. Some of our locations we have relocated three or four times. Yeah. Um, what keeps you going in spite of those obstacles? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, I mean, so if you're watching this or listening to this, uh, this ATM business isn't our main jobs. Dustin's uh, an engineer. What, do you work with Elon or what? Tell, tell the people. <laughs> he doesn't, but... I do not work he's for or with yeah. Elon Musk. But I, I help One a day. company build satellites and we yeah. launched on a couple of his rockets. Yeah, so this dude's a genius. Uh, but basically, <laughs> he's an no engineer. Pressure. He has a day job. Um, you know, I have... I, I'm a little bit younger. If you're listening to this, you can't see. Um, you know, my beard hasn't sprouted yet completely. We'll yeah. get there, but... Spence is still 12, I'm 54. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> basically. That's why we're the power team. But, but I think what keeps me going is the fact that I was a collections agent this year. Working, I worked 11 jobs in the past 12 months, in 2019, after college. And none of those jobs had potential. I hated being told what to do. Um, it wasn't until we were doing, we had been doing this ATM business alongside that, where I actually had left one of my jobs and one day it just hit me as I was driving past the building that we make more off of our ATMs than what my paycheck was when I was working there. And so I think it's realizing that there's so much potential, um, I mean, cash isn't dead in our opinion in any means. And so, I think if you can keep in mind that when you stick with something, um, you, you can't chase two rabbits into a hole, right? Mm -hmm. Some wise man once told me that. <laughs> Dustin <laughs> actually told me that. Um, like I said, forest, but it, yeah. you can't, it would be hard. I mean, if you're really tiny rabbits, uh, yeah, they could probably fit in a hole, but <laughs> yeah. it would be really hard to catch them. But you yeah. can't, yeah, you can't chase two rabbits into the forest or even into the hole because they're gonna go different directions. And yeah, you're gonna split your focus. Yeah, you split your focus, and so um, I think that's a, that's a good question. I mean, I'm I don't know how to explain it other than like I'm just that way. You know, I'm very type A. I, I probably look like I'm in the military or had once been in the military. I kind of have that demeanor. So, do you like um, do you like the challenge? Is it the the potential yeah. the upside that excites you? Or? Yeah, I mean the financial aspect of like, wow, I could make more from my side hustle than my main day job. Uh, for one, that, that's, that was a big driver. Um, to me today, I think my driver is that uh, people don't know about the ATM business. No. And the fact that it's, I mean, it changed our lives uh, for the better, especially through a recession or a pandemic or whatever you want to call it. Um, I just think it's just 
I think what keeps me going is I take pride in like moving forward. I, I really do. That's just that's just my answer. That's my honest. That's me. That's, great. that's my honest answer. Is I take pride in. I want to be the best. I come from an athletic background, so it's been knocked into my head a couple of times, like work hard or else type of thing. And so <laughs> um, I'm kind of just that way. So I yeah. think it's uh, proving to myself every day that I can move forward and that that's the goal, right? Progress over perfection is honestly the name of the game. So. Dude, that is totally the name of the game. Anybody listening, progress over perfection. See, that's the thing. It's like you can be anyone and make this business work. Yeah, dude, I, I know people that send us emails that didn't know the right way to spell their, T-H-E-I-R, and their, T-H-E-R-E, -E, like different contexts. Like, you don't have to be a brainiac to figure this out, right? Totally. Uh, so if, you're, if you think your <laughs> IQ is lower than 50, well, there's hope for you because yeah. you know, my IQ is lower than 50 anyway, <laughs> so there you go. Right, it just, we're yeah, doing it. Exactly, so if people actually want to learn how to do this business step by step, there is a course available. Yeah. And it is uh, put on by atmmachines.com and this course deal is pretty cool because it's only $99, which this this business is very simple, but to have somebody who, who can tell you step by step how to do it for only 99 bucks is pretty incredible. And if you end up starting your ATM business and buying the machine, it's refunded to you, so it's free. If you succeed. If you don't want to do it, you you know, you find out you spent 99 bucks to learn, yeah, I don't want to do this. And that's, you know, I mean, people spend that a couple nights in dinner. Yeah, let's be real. Like, if you're under the age of 25, you spend that on a weekend, just one weekend. So <laughs> just reallocate it to something that's potentially going to be the most life-changing, I think, totally. opportunity ever. And um, so the way it works is if you get the course, it's 99 bucks, which is, dude, we spent probably three times as much as that to, <laughs> to try and learn some of these lessons. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think 99 bucks and then as soon as you process your first transaction, uh, we actually refund that back on there the same day. And so it, it really is for people who truly do want to make the commitment to do so. Um, but the link is, if, if you go to it, I'll put in the bio, I'll put in the description of all of these platforms that we're running right now. It's actually ATM machine dot teachable dot com um, just follow that link go to it and there's tons of stuff on there um, we have access to a Facebook group that you can join multiple Facebook groups we have an ebook that's free that's basically A to Z what you might need to know and you can read through that on your laptop or on your phone or on your lunch break driving well, don't do it on driving when you're driving but you know what I mean anywhere <laughs> yeah. anywhere you want I know I I, um, what I do that yeah 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 um, so there's so much resource available through that course. Um, I mean, I just had watched the course when we were going to release it, uh, and I learned stuff from it. And I've already been doing this for a couple of years and know enough to to obviously be telling other people about it. So there's a lot of stuff in there. I think it would be more yeah. than beneficial for your time. Well, just to give you an idea of who's putting it on, his name's uh, Justin Gilmore, and he has been in the ATM business for, like, what, over 15 years or something like that? Yeah, yep. And Started with no money, no capital, got expelled from high school. Yes. Um, we're going to get him on the show. He's one of our partners, so he uh, can tell more about himself. I'd rather him tell people. Sure, more. sure. But but he's uh, he's done very well. I mean, Justin is a, he's a made millions with the ATM business and he has uh, machines all over the country. So he's teaching you how to succeed and really when you're when we want to learn things and we want to be successful, we want to learn from people who have been where we are, like who have walked a mile in our shoes mm -hmm. and then who have achieved what we want to achieve. And so if a lot of you don't come from a wealthy background or a privileged life or whatever, and even some of you do, that's great because then you have a leg up to start. But if some of you don't have capital and you don't have much of an education, that's good news for you because we have a guy who came from that background who has achieved, he's, he is the number one website for ATMs on Google and he's one of the leading ATM providers in the country. And this is the number one ATM course in the country. So you'd be in really good hands uh, by checking out that course. Yeah, you'll cut, let's, let's be honest, you'll cut years out of